So you're undiagnosed because according to the people and doctors who have touched your balls, it was not the exam. Yes. A modern podcast where Chris and Mike talk about TV, movies, superheroes, and everything in between. It's time for Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, uh, we previewed Doctor Strange. Yes, we as in you. Or at least as, as in me, not not, not you. Uh, more of Logan's details keep popping up. Shink, shink. All right. Yes, there are some massive DC rumors afoot. Rumors. If they're the rumors, would it be a feat? <laughs> a feat. Either way. And more. So yeah, I'm really um, I'm really excited about the the rumors because if uh, if you guys are out there and familiar with what I like to talk about on this show, I love talking about rumors just because uh, it's the it's the best way to speculate and speculation is always so fun. So I'm looking forward to that uh, section. We're gonna talk about some some interesting things. I mean, honestly, it could be a whole episode in and of itself from this this link that that Mike sent me. And honestly, I think this is um one of like we can. This is the fifth thing you've sent me, Mike, so now we can count them on one hand. How many, <laughs> how many things you contributed to the podcast? Well, no. the, the problem is, is you're always getting to them like, well before I do. So when I see <laughs> something, I just assume you already know about it. So, Well, if you're in the Reddit, you got it before I do. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, this week, uh, before we begin, I got to play Gears of War 4. Uh, I think I might have talked about it a little bit last weekend, but I got to play with a uh, friend of the show, Quentin Parker. Yeah, that was uh, really funny. Uh, you you lured him away from uh, dinner uh, on Friday night because we were going to go out to this uh, this really awesome uh, Mexican place that we like to go to, and uh, he didn't really have he didn't have much going on Friday night, so we were just like, hey, uh, come on up here, uh, grab some dinner with us. He's just like, yeah, you know, I might. And then um, and then I saw in a in a separate uh, conversation between you two, you're just like, hey, I just got Gears of War, and he was just like, oh, that that came out this week, it's already out. Oh, I'm gonna download it. And just like, no, nah, he's not coming out tonight. <laughs> he's gonna be playing Gears of War. It is. And then he got home, and it wasn't even downloaded until the next day, which was <laughs> even funnier. Uh, but we played through, I think, 18 out of 24 chapters yesterday. Wow. Uh, we, we had some issues, like, like we would just, our bodies would just blow up out of nowhere, so we had to repeat <laughs> some stuff a couple of times, because uh, we didn't play a normal, but it, it's been fun. It was a good time. I always, I I've always time. really, really enjoyed the Gears of War franchise. I mean, I'm, I don't play a whole lot of uh, video games nowadays, but Gears of War was always really fun, because I like the third-person shooter aspect of it, so you always got to see your character fully. So the cover system always just felt more accurate, you know, kind of when you can see your full character. And then also I kind of like the um, the momentum of it. Like I liked how quickly paced the story was, but I also kind of like how your characters just felt like they – they were more like lumbering. They weren't like super fast like a Master Chief or like a Quake video game where you're like shooting all over the screen. It's just like when you mm-hmm. move, like you're kind of moving with purpose. So I always love that about the games. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely its own beast in and of itself. And um, I spent a little bit today playing the Horde mode where it's like you versus like waves of enemies. Yeah, they were kind and- of, I think they were like the first, I mean, they're, Correct me if I'm wrong, people out there, maybe like a PC game did this, but I think they were kind of the first to really make Horde a thing, Horde mode a thing, I mean, though. yeah, I think so, that and Halo did a, it was called Firefight, um, it, but they're both owned by Microsoft, so they were like, here's one idea, you two studios, go implement it in your own way kind of deal. Um, and those are those are good couch co I mean, this one's split screen, it's good couch co-op, mm-hmm. so you don't get a lot of those games anymore, and... Uh, it, it was definitely a good time. So I did that this weekend. Mike, did you do anything good? We, we... Man, I did a whole lot of uh, I did a whole lot of uh, drawing this weekend. My wife did a lot of writing. We're very uh, we've been very studious this weekend. Uh, it was a uh, <laughs> we had a lot of problem with society yesterday. Uh, there was a couple point in time where we where we left the apartment to either go run an errand or go pick up some food or, and we were just we were just dealing with the the public. 
and it was just driving me crazy. Like either uh, uh, just imbeciles out on the road, people that don't understand how the Costco parking lot works, and it was just uh, it was uh, it was it was it was so bad. We were just like we're going back home and we're not leaving the whole weekend. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with society this weekend. So we it, it's a full moon. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. It, was, it definitely was a full moon this weekend. Yeah, it's a so. full moon. Something's probably in retrograde. I don't know. Maybe the horoscopes are all out of whack. But so we mm-hmm. have been hunkered down in the apartment and we're not leaving until tomorrow yeah exactly okay well that's cool that's cool i I also did uh, some comic book cleaning out i think i have probably i would say 50 to 100 comic books i'm going to be giving out at conventions uh, this coming year speaking of Um, speaking of comics i mean we don't we don't delve into comics too much just because I think the the world of uh, TV and movies is too fast-paced for us to cram any comic book uh, talk in there. But I actually jumped mm-hmm. um, I jumped into a, a book my brother bought me, I think, like maybe one or two Christmases ago. It's, it's been on my shelf for a while, and I've been meeting to read it. Uh, the uh, Arkham Asylum book um, from uh, – I think, I, I think the book's the um, – maybe like five years old, maybe older. I'm not sure the exact year Arkham Asylum came out. But it's this nice little kind of collector's edition uh, trade that has like the comic book script in the back and like thumbnail layouts and stuff. So not only did I get to read the script, read the story, which was like this amazing like painterly art, it looked like it was like painted on there with this crazy kind of like a mm. psychedelic story and um, with these weird like character designs for Batman, which is cool. But I got to see like the script and thumbnails after it. So um, yeah, I'm trying to get back into uh reading more comic books because i'm starting to try to write some of my own stuff so you know you got to read before you start writing your own stuff so i'm jumping back ins- i'm jumping back what? into that comic book shelf man <laughs> yeah and that's the way to do it like i say uh it's good to be inspired but not imitate so mm-hmm. i definitely i think i think you have the chops to do it mike you have the chops to do it All and right. it's what we're almost halfway through october uh as as uh my friend of Comic Guy Brian Smith say Rocktober is almost over, <laughs> and um, we might have to share our old Star Wars history of Star Wars stuff because Rogue One's coming out, and that actually leads us into our first topic of the day. Ooh, in news. nice, Rogue One. nice transition. <laughs> that was an accident, and it worked out. Uh, but we got a new story trailer, technically story trailer number two for Rogue One. Mike, you were on the fence about watching this trailer. You yeah. were like, I, I've seen enough. I don't need to see any more. Exactly. Um, the, the thing that really brought me into it was because I had to think, okay, this is a Star Wars trailer. They, they, did, us, they did us well when Force Awakens came out. They didn't spoil anything. Uh, you know, they, 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 kept things, they kept things pretty um, minimal, just getting excitement. So that's why I was a little worried going into it. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot new in this trailer necessarily. We, we get more points on the story. You know, there's, there's stuff about, um, uh, Jen Ursa's, uh, family that pops mm-hmm. up. I don't, I actually don't want to be too descriptive because after I watched it, I was just like, maybe I shouldn't have watched it because they give us a little bit of backstory about, um, uh, slightly about her parents a little bit. And I, I didn't even really know that was going to be a, a, an, an issue, an issue in this story. So, you know, that would have been kind of cool going and not knowing that, but it's really not that big of a deal. So, I mean, if you're already sold on seeing uh, Star Wars and you don't need to do a podcast where you talk about the trailer, you know, you probably don't have to watch it. But it was, it was, it got me excited. That's for sure. It's definitely different than the other one. The other one was a slower pace. I, I feel this one gave more life to Jin or so rather than the other one did. The other one, she was kind of stale, like I rebel kind yeah. of deal. And more this one, she felt more like the leader of this group. Yeah, it definitely felt more like um. They're getting like a team together. There seemed to be more morale in this trailer, which is which is good. There's still there's still this lingering bug in the back of my head about this movie, and it was a piece of news that we reported. I want to say back in the middle of the summer, where people were talking about how maybe Disney was not on board with the tone of the movie, how it was being put together, and I don't. And I think this may have come with. Um, with the scheduled reshoots that were coming up, which obviously all movies get reshoots, so that's not uh, that's not the news point. So uh, there's this little bug in the back of my head, you know, especially after seeing Suicide Squad. Now I know it's a totally different <laughs> it's a totally different studio, totally different type of film, but there's just this little thing that's gnawing at me of just like, did anybody get involved and try to change this movie from what it was originally going to be? 
I'm I'm hoping I don't have to worry about that just because the echelon of filmmaking here is Star Wars franchise quality. And then, you know, Disney really, really knows what the fuck that they're doing. They have a really good track record so far just within the last couple of years. So I, I'm, I'm, it's just, it, you know, it's just, it's still back there. I'm hoping I see this movie and that bug just flies away. Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think, it may, I mean, if you hear that, that might be put in your head. But if you didn't know that, I mean, it still looks like a great movie. Uh, we got a new poster here that's kind of more classical Star Wars. Um, you get to see, we got to see a little more Darth Vader in this one. And uh, he definitely, it feels just as intimidating as ever mm-hmm. um, is in, in the, the couple shots we did see. It's got the crew. We've got some beach stuff going on. Um, I don't know if you saw this. There's one section where they're looking down at the planet, and there's a. Uh, it looks like a huge Jedi statue that has been fallen into the sand. Oh wow! I didn't notice that. Yeah, you got you got to pause and look at it. But I definitely think they're going to be building a lot of you know Star Wars backstory into this. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff that we don't normally see in the regular movies and. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. The only thing that throws me off is when you look at this poster and stuff. The stormtroopers in like the like the knee deep like beach water is like, is this a sandals commercial? Like, <laughs> d- are they trying to sell me? Like, you need to go to this island and hang out with these dudes. Look how much fun they're having in the water. Yeah, they, they seem to really be leaning into this uh, beach motif. You know, you know, they've had that promo work of that sand trooper or whatever that was supposed to be your beach trooper, I think. And they really highlighting the that beach kind of storming shot. So I don't know if. Maybe Maybe that's kind of like the third act climax where they're maybe that's where the plans for the Death Star are hidden or just maybe that's just one of the more visually appealing set pieces. But one thing that I did pick out on this trailer before we move on to the next news topic is the vistas that we've got mm-hmm. to see shots are beautiful. So that's one thing that always kind of eases my mind, even though it doesn't really need to be eased too much, is I love knowing that even even if for some reason this movie just craps the bed for some odd reason, it's going to look beautiful either way. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. There's so shots we've never seen in a Star Wars movie, and again, we've always said uh, like Gareth Edwards knows how to handle scope mm-hmm. and scale, and and you, you definitely see it. So I'm really, really excited for Rogue One, and we'll we'll keep you guys posted as we get closer to that December release date. That's two months away, Mike. Mm-hmm. That, I, it doesn't feel like Star Wars is two months away. No, for sure. it doesn't. However, uh, afterwards, we got to worry about what the next Star Wars spinoff movie would be. I don't think there will be a Rogue 2 if I was going to be a betting man. Yeah, you're probably um, right. I, I would say Obi-Wan is my best bet on a movie other than the Han Solo solo, solo movie. Um, but uh, Obi-Wan deserves a movie. And Ewan McGregor says he's hoping for two Obi-Wan movies oh. set, uh, in there so in I, the time frame. Did some – did like – what does – did TMZ attack Obi Wan on the sidewalk, or you and McGregor on the sidewalk, and just ask him what they think about Star Wars, or is this maybe he, this... he was in he was in an interview for something? I think maybe he's got a TV show or a movie coming out, and um, they they asked him, um, you know, you know, what do you, have you been talking to, you know, Lucasfilm and Disney, and he he's got one of those reactions is like. Yeah, I've been talking, but I can't say anything about it. Mm, kind of deal. Gotcha. And then he's like, "Yeah, I I I really hope to, you know, I, to do it loose, you know, two more." He's uh, cuz he said he's 45, Alex Guinness was 60. He could definitely fit two more in before he hits that age. Well, no, no, so. it would be really interesting now that I kind of think about it. So, like you said, you don't think that there's, there's going to be a Rogue 2 or a sequel to Rogue 1. And I, I mm-hmm. totally get that just because they have this other type of franchise that they're trying to build. You know, these are supposed to be like kind of independent stories. But, you know, what what happens if we fall in love with these characters? We fall in love with Jen. We love all of, the, we love all of her supplementary stuff. I mean, if the people out there want it, they're going to get it because it's going to make money. So what if they kind of do maybe this kind of Avengers style prequel team up, you know, like what if uh, they find a way to make the timeline work to where they can bring maybe all of these characters into like a Star Wars story Avengers type movie. I, I mean, I don't really know if the timelines would meet up, but that would actually be really cool. I don't know if it would be too ham fisted or maybe it's not so much team wise, but maybe they just all kind of somehow cross paths. But that would be kind of cool because, you know, if Ewan McGregor somehow is hinting at two movies, it would be weird to get a Rogue One movie, a Han Solo movie, a Obi-Wan movie, and then another Obi-Wan movie. So maybe they're 
maybe every everything is going to get a sequel. So we're going to get six Star Wars stories, and it's all from sequels. Maybe there's like a Defenders, you know, style mm-hmm. movie out there. But um, Obi Wan, Ewan McGregor, that's the one thing that worked in the prequels. That's the one guy that yeah. actually brought the character to life. And it would be kind of a fun way to tie back to the prequels without really having to accept them, because unfortunately we can't assume that they don't exist because they are they are canon. So right. basically, just only take the good stuff out of the canon. Yeah, and a lot of other people have been saying for like a Yoda prequel, and I don't care enough about Yoda to give him a whole movie. Yeah, I mean, um, we all obviously love Yoda, but I mean, could you really listen to him talk for ninety minutes like that? I mean, I it's just I understand it's yeah. the way he talks or maybe creatures talk or wherever he was uh, brought up. That's his cadence of speak. But like 90 minutes of Yoda talking like that. I mean, uh, I don't I don't think I can get on board. with that. Yeah, I, I know I couldn't. I mean, even uh, other people are claiming for a Knights of the Old Republic style film oh. uh, going even farther. Yeah, back. I mean, that would so, be crazy. Yes, I mean, after I think it was recently an update for the Old Republic video game, a, a cinematic uh, of Jedi and Sith and, and stuff fighting has definitely spawned. I think it was a petition to get a, a film like that because they they absolutely they they people who do those will love that stuff and it doesn't hurt the current state of Star Wars. If I had a so, nickel for every online petition that actually worked, I would not have mm-hmm. a nickel. <laughs> oh, you'd owe money probably. Yeah, at this probably. <laughs> you probably done more damage than good with those things. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, if you guys have any Star Wars characters you'd like to see, um, other than you know Obi Wan, Han Solo, or Rogue One, uh, maybe Mace Windu, if that's your that's your thing, let us know. Write us in, tell us, tweet us, whatever. We we definitely love to talk Star Wars with whoever we can we can get. <laughs> so so bring that up. Earlier this week, I got to see uh, a 15 minute preview of Doctor Strange. We talked about this last week. Uh, Mike didn't want to rearrange the schedule. A lot of the theater was probably only like three quarters of the way full at the one I was at. I don't think they did enough promotion for it. Yeah, or uh, maybe the quarter that didn't show up thought it was actually the movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know, but um, I got this really. I got six of these kick-ass posters from it actually. Nice the IMAX posters because they just set them out on the chairs, and I'm like, well, Did- no one's sitting here. <laughs> at the end of the thing, I'm taking them. So, so we grabbed a bunch of those, but I also found out tickets are on sale for Doctor Strange, and I think you found out the same exact time in a different manner. I felt so. like, yeah, I felt like it was a psychic link from Doctor Strange, because I actually had no idea. I didn't see any tweet, you know, I didn't see any Marvel Instagram post that said tickets were on mm. sale, but I just, I just had this, like, I just had this notion in my head. I was just like, you know, Doctor Strange is coming up soon. I feel like tickets are probably on sale and I go on the website and bam, they're right there. And then literally like 20 minutes later, you tell me you bought your tickets. So I don't know. Did, did they come out that day we bought them or did we just buy them at the same time? I was, I've been looking like the, the week or two prior online and I was not able to buy them online. Um, mm-hmm. They were like, nope, you can get alerts when these are on sale. And I went in, I think the IMAX preview was the point saying, you preview the movie now. You can buy your tickets. Oh, gotcha. Kind of deal. Because if you preview the movie and couldn't buy your tickets, that would like defeat the whole purpose. Yeah, like, you want to you want to snag those people. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, but I got my I got my seats. You got your seats. So we're prepped. We're ready. Yes, I'm going IMAX because I found out in this 15 minute preview that there's one hour of IMAX specific size footage in this movie, Mike. Oh, that would be exciting. Like we are we are used to maybe 15 20 minutes of the airplane scene in Civil War was the only IMAX size footage in that. Um, there's one hour of IMAX size footage. And I think that goes back to the, the how much CG is in this movie. Yeah, it's probably much. it's probably easier to composite, you know, that that frame size. Yeah, you you build it you build your CG set and then you just add Doctor Strange on his green screen into that. Pretty easy, right? You don't need the actual camera doing that exactly kind of stuff. but so this 15 minutes of footage so this actually worked out really really well for me because i'm kind of opposed to these 15 minute previews just because when i go see the movie full length for the first time i don't want to kind of have to check out my brain during those 15 minutes because oh i've seen all of this already i feel like it's going to ruin my flow of enjoying the movie but i understand i'm weird and i'm specific and no one else out there thinks like me um but this is perfect because I felt like I sent in an agent that's going to tell me exactly what I want to know, but without any spoilers. So I feel like you're the you're the agent. You're going to save me from spoilers, but you're going to tell me about kind of the vibe of the movie and what I can get excited about. 
Yeah, so they didn't do... Guardians of the Galaxy did a specific scene. They did the breakout, prison breakout scene. Mm -hmm. This one actually took several different snippets from the film. So you didn't get one 15-minute segment like you were worried about. It was a little different. Um, But I will tell you, this is the most visually arresting film I've ever seen, Mike. You are going to be entranced with how well they have transferred Jack Kirby... Jack Kirby's 1970s trippy art style to cinema that's so it cool looks, it looks so beautiful you're gonna you're gonna want to watch it multiple times just to see what you miss because there's so much going on and you're like marvel's letting people get away with this like this is not a normal looking movie it is so trippy slash beautiful and i just i was blown away by by that stuff um the humor exists in this movie more so than i i thought not like it doesn't overwhelm it but they do show a couple funny clips that that haven't been shown in trailers so mm-hmm. we don't have to worry that it's not a serious tone movie throughout the whole thing that's a, th- um, i mean that's kind of the classic marvel dna right is that you know you're gonna get an awesome action flick but you're gonna kind of get that uh humor that keeps it lighthearted. you know yes and then again the action scenes um definitely are going to be exhilarating to watch uh, in in context of the film rather than just these little snippets. Ooh, you're, getting, so, you're getting me hyped, man. You're really getting me hyped. Yeah, so just to say, the trailers we've seen so far do not do this film justice. Those trailers are just the, ice, the tip of this iceberg on how much this movie really blew me away like i'm like yeah i know it's a marvel movie you're gonna give me an origin story blah blah blah. but i was literally sitting back in my seat just in awe my eyes wide open the whole time and i don't think i've been like that in a marvel film in 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 a while honestly awesome 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 so i i definitely i definitely think dr strange is worth the time watch it while you can because spoiler alerts are coming out uh, online where people are giving out the the mid credit scene and the end credit scene. You bastards, knock it off. (laughs) Because it does come out I think the 25th. I think we have like a week and a half until it starts coming out in Europe. Hmm. The full movie. So um, we gotta be a little careful what we read and click but I definitely think this movie is going to um, be, we're we're gonna gonna love it as, as is tradition. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so doc, that's a Dr. Strange preview. If you guys have any questions on it uh, and you, you want me to go to more details that we don't talk about here, you know, tweet at me, uh, private message me on Twitter, whatever. Well, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll let you know the, the truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> have you watched Blade lately, Mike? That's my question for you. It, it's today. It's been a while. <laughs> so there was a rumor earlier that the people, the character, the people who own Underworld – uh, wanted to do a crossover with the Underworld characters and Blade characters, the Wesley Snipes version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, well, obviously, Underworld, you're out of ideas. Why do you need to drag Blade into this? Like, just just stop right there. Yeah. But Kevin Feige went on to clarify that there is nothing imminent for this character. They are not going to give him the Underworld. They don't have anything on the horizon just yet. But he could just be putting out fires of this rumor I, that Underworld might try to use it rather than say what they're really doing. With I think this is uh, this is definitely a rumor we can say that I believe is fully a rumor. Uh, Kevin Feige doesn't need Underworld. Underworld needs Kevin Feige. So yeah. I, maybe this is kind of their secret uh, their secret way to get the the rumor building. Maybe there's like the only way to save this franchise is to drag Marvel into it. Yeah, that's that's not gonna happen. Maybe Wesley Snipes need, needs a job. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think when Blade comes back, it's, I think it's probably going to be Netflix or, um, maybe it's going to be the next season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Maybe when Ghost Rider's done, they bring in Blade or something. But I think, I think Blade actually fits really, really well into the structure of a television show and a television show budget. You know, vampire, Mm -hmm. vampires are easier to do on, on a smaller budget. And that darker tone is, is probably more effective in a, in a series type of thing so uh i would i would love to see uh blade on netflix so um that that's what that's what i'm thinking so underworld get out of here <laughs> like you don't we don't need you <laughs> yeah we definitely we definitely don't need underworld uh, but i think it's funny that you know you say blade works better in a tv show they tried to blade tv show i actually own the first season of it <laughs> um it wasn't wesley snipes it was like in that weird transition period after he was done and mm-hmm. uh it's it's not that good um <laughs> But, again, it wasn't under Marvel's umbrella. It wasn't under their supervision. I think he would fit well into 
I, I want to say Agents of Shield as well, but maybe maybe a Ghost Rider Blade, like a, a, a Sons of the the. I think it's Midnight Suns is what it was called. Hmm. Like werewolves, vampires, uh, Ghost Rider, like dealing with like their own stuff would be kind of interesting. Um, but I don't know if we'll ever get to that point. But we can keep our fingers crossed. Ooh. Maybe no, it'd be really Doctor Strange opens. No, it'd be up really to cool. This this just piqued my interest. What if we got like a like a, a really really dark team up of uh, Marvel heroes? So um, you know we can start with Blade and Ghost Rider and whatever character that they have coming up or refresh. May, uh, maybe the Punisher is too action oriented, but it'd be cool to get like a, a Netflix series that would drop like right around October, like in Halloween, and just give me like a terrifying superhero show. Wouldn't that be weird? Kind of along the lines of like American Horror Story, but like with like superheroes, like it would be a, such a weird experience where like I would actually look forward to being scared because I'm a baby and I don't like scary movies. But if I know Blade is there to save me, it might be it might be more fun. I mean, I can think of, like, maybe, like, if they start doing, like, you know how they had, like, the Marvel shorts, like, the one-shots? Mm-hmm. Like, do, like, an hour or an hour and a half one-shot, like, every Halloween Whoa. or every October with a different supernatural character. That would be cool. Like, a, you just, know, like, the, the BBC and over there in the UK, they get Christmas specials. You know, let's mm-hmm. let's have the USA take over Halloween give us Halloween specials. Yeah, they, I mean, any, any, any holiday, you pick it. You want a Columbus Day special? We'll give you one. <laughs> Let's let's figure this out. We'll get there. So, yes, we we'll have to see what what where Blade pops up next. Um, I'm definitely excited to see where that goes. Uh, speaking of rumors, and I guess this falls into rumors or news. I don't know, but the Sony Pictures boss Tim or Tom Rothman has says real news about Spider Man movie spinoffs is in the near future. Um. Okay. I'm always worried when you say Sony. So I don't I don't know what to think here. So, so Sony Pictures, they are very, they are very happy with their Marvel team up. They are like, great, Marvel is going to do great with Spider Man. We love it. This is not going to change. But they say spinoff, and they, there's no real clarification what that means. Is Marvel going to work with them on doing maybe a, a Venom movie, or or what kind of Spider Man spinoffs do they mean? Question marks, Mike. Question so, marks. So. Th- <laughs> So I, I, I get it. You know, Spider-Man has a lot of really cool villains, a lot of cool characters in his in his story and universe. But does a Venom movie really work with what we what we got on the roster right now? I mean, I much rather have a, an actually good movie where Spider-Man fights Venom than a standalone Venom movie, you know? You know, obviously when they the, when they talked about this back when Sony w- only had Spider-Man, I felt like they were just kind of reaching for the only things that they had. Like, uh, well, we only have these Spider-Man properties. How can we get Spider-Man movie without Spider-Man? And I don't know, put Venom in his own movie. Like, I get that Venom has his own comic books, but like, you know, does he need his own movie? Maybe further down the line, but like, I don't want this siloed Sony universe at all. You know, if we're going to get a spinoff, of Venom and Carnage team up road trip. I don't know. Like I want to see Captain America pop in it or something or give me a Marvel character. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be so siloed just because like, I don't like the Sony stink on things. Like they've just, they've, they've left too bad of a taste in my mouth. It just makes me nervous. So whatever happens, Kevin Feige needs to be at the top of it. Cause he's the only man I can trust right now. No, no, exactly. And again, we've only have speculation. We don't have any real news. So uh-huh. when he says real news, it's as in opposed to the speculative news. So maybe we'll get something good. Maybe they'll be like, you know, we're going to, in phase four, we're going to help. We're going to give them some more characters to play with and give them some more money to make some more Spider Man movies that they d- definitely will be announcing later. I don't know. So hopefully, again, real news will be better than the speculative news because when we start speculating and Sony's involved, you can tell <laughs> we get nervous. We get, <laughs> we get we, our palms get a little sweaty. So <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely true. We'll keep you posted. Uh, a movie I would like to see Venom actually take off and or, or pop up, and it's actually Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm, yeah, because he he's been part of the team in the comic books lately because the symbiotes come from a, an alien homeworld. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes sense. But Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, um, Vin Diesel is to voice Groot in sixteen languages. Oh, okay. Um, does he just say like the 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 like Spanish word for Groot or something? I think Groot well, is a well, made up word, right? So wouldn't Groot it just is be- a name? But he says I am Groot. Oh, so the I am changes. Okay. Yes, and it would he 
and it would be him doing it as opposed to someone else uh, who's a native speaker. (laughs) So you would get Vin Diesel's actual voice. He did six different languages in the first movie. But because of how popular it was and how much of a world phenomenon it became, uh-huh. um, they're they're hoping to to pop him up to sixteen. And I think when he did this, it was an interview. I think he did one in the, like South Korean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, he's definitely getting it down. I feel I, I feel like they're just like okay uh, okay Vin. I mean we we really got to find a way to to actually make you get the money. Uh, make it worth your while. Like we're paying you a lot of money here to say three words. We're at least going to make you say it in all these different languages. You know, we got you on the clock. We got you here all day. We can't just shoot all the work in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Does that? And then um, he's also he is voicing Baby Groot. So I, we don't even know what that sounds like yet. I'm really, really crossing our fingers. We get a trailer before Doctor Strange comes out, so we can watch it with Doctor Strange. Um, we're, we're in that window. We are, I think, what, seven months away, uh, from it. So, uh, we, we, we gotta be getting a trailer sometime soon. Um, and I really want to see more Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So really, really excited to see what they bring to the table. Captain Marvel has also been part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, actually. And, uh, she's got a movie coming up and we've got some information from Kevin Feige again saying the film will be an origin story for this character. Okay. Uh, um, how that fits into the time frame between Infinity War and Avengers Four, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll definitely have to play that one by ear. But um, he did say that she'll probably be the most powerful hero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at that point in time. Ooh, that's kind of cool. You know, that's always a big thing in uh, comic books. You know, lots of uh, lots of people like to make blogs and videos about like the power levels of characters, who's the strongest. You know, talking about different feats that they achieved. So maybe now we can kind of start doing that in the movies. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. Like, yeah, Captain Marvel is going to be the most powerful. Yeah, I mean, right now I'd, it'd be a toss-up between Hulk and Thor, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh, from what we've seen in, in Thanos, I guess, we really haven't seen him do a whole lot. But um, definitely interesting to see what they do with Captain Marvel. And making her the most powerful is definitely uh, a bold move uh, for that. But uh, it'll, it'll all make sense in the coming months and years, I guess, when, when they announce more information for her film. Mm-hmm. Such as, like, a director. I don't think I don't think we even have a director. <laughs> yeah, we need a little bit more than just um, um, Allison. Uh, was it uh, Allison? Uh, wait, no, Allison Brie. Yeah, no, Brie. Is it Brie? Brie Larson. It's Brie, Brie Larson. Larson. Yeah, sorry. We, I knew that we always was, do this. We knew, always follow Allison Brie. Brie Larson. There's. Yeah. I know there's there's cheese in there somewhere. So cheese. Brie. What? Brie. Brie oh. is cheese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I get it. I get it now. Sorry. Right. I was like, what? Where's All right. Well, my, we'll, you and your we'll, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> yes. So uh, Daredevil season one. We actually haven't talked about this in a long time because we've been caught up on Luke Cage and uh, Daredevil season two and Jessica Jones. But the Blu-ray release finally has a release date here in the Americas. Um, uh, the, it's been out in, I think, uh, Europe and other nations since October 3rd, but we're looking at, I think it's November 8th is the release date. So in November, if you don't have Netflix or you want to own it on your DVD shelf, like I do, <laughs> you can pick up Daredevil, uh, season one in, in November. I'd be really curious what, uh, special features are on there. I saw some people had some, uh, interesting takes, um, on some blogs this week, how they wish the uh, director's commentary would come back because it kind of died with the likes of the DVD itself. So if we're you know kind of getting something that's originally streamable on a physical thing, I wonder if maybe there'll be some commentary on there. We can get a little bit more inside of Daredevil. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to bust your bubble here. Oh man! <laughs> because the European edition didn't come with any special features. It's just straight up the shows on Blu-ray. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> uh, simply because it's a different. I think it's a, since it's a different beast. I don't know if Netflix wanted to have them come back and do it. I, I don't know because there's a different director for each episode. It's not, um, you know, I I never heard of directors commentary on DVDs for TV series before. Well, you just bring in the showrunner. You don't, you know, you don't necessarily yeah. have the director in there. Yeah, so you'd have different people on each each episode. I think, um, but I mean, that's that's a lot of hours adding on top of you know the tv show as well Mm -hmm. um but uh right now right now as of the last when i heard about this i think it was uh on monday 
Um, it's forty dollars, and it only contains the episodes themselves for now. But that could change as we get more information on the release. Well, we all know Which, I'm not buying it, so <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it, the the weirdest part for me is like, do I want to get it? Do I not want to get it? Why is this eighteen months later after its initial release? Well, you have a you really have a decision to make here because yeah. you are you are the collector, you are the you you are the Benicio del Toro of filling up your shelf. So you kind of have to make this decision of. If you buy this, you're kind of opening up an unstoppable uh, flow of having to buy everything that's streamable in physical form. So you could be like, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to draw the line. It's originally streamable content. I'm not going to have it physically. Or if you buy this, you're going to have to buy Jessica Jones. You're going to have to buy Season 2. You're going to have to buy Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, Punisher. You're, you're opening up a couple hundred dollars there that you're going to have to drop. If then that's if they come out. See, that's the thing. Eighteen months after season one comes re- first release, that's that's a huge window. Yeah, it almost and, seems more like piracy control, you know. Yeah, and like I don't know how many. I mean, Daredevil again. A lot of people consider Daredevil season one the best series uh, that Marvel's offered on Netflix, and. I mean, I don't, I don't agree. You know, with that. this is this is what but. you do. Get just get the album, just get the case art printed out and put it in a in a case. And then when you open it up, just put the URL to the to to the uh, to, to Netflix on there. Just a nice get, QR code. Yeah, like, ex- exactly. Yeah, I mean, definitely the the DVD case isn't even special. It's it's like the the Daredevil painted thing from from his intro mm-hmm. kind of deal. And just says Daredevil complete first season. I don't know. There's nothing special about it, which makes me want to get it. But again, the completionist is me. Like says, I kind of want it, <laughs> even though Agent Carter season two and Shield season three have never have not been released yet on on physical form. So, oh man, I don't know. I don't know what Marvel TV, ABC Studios is doing with these DVD Blu-ray releases, and it, it it's got me kind of wishy washy on if I even <laughs> want them at all. So, well, they don't care about you. Know. That's for sure. They don't. We'll we'll keep you posted on that as well. We'll we'll figure out. We'll see next month what I want to do. In our intro, we talked about the movie Logan, which is Wolverine three. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got some information this week that the villain will be played by Boyd Holbrook, uh, the character Donald Pierce. Okay. Who in the comic <laughs> books is actually a cyborg, um, who who I guess hunts Wolverine a little bit. Um, in the in the comic books, he kind of wears like a. Um, like a, I don't know, Victorian style outfit. He's got the jacket and the frills down the middle, hmm. the tight pants. And, but in this one, it's more of a, uh, uh, he just looks more of a, a hard ass, like with sunglasses and, and his hair slicked back. Okay. <laughs> um, you watch, you watch Narcos, right? Uh, no, Did that's watch- actually something I haven't gotten around to. Okay, I I think I think it, as my other podcast, um, Filmside Chats, Patrick had just finished Narcos season two, but he's one of the main leads, the leading guy of Narcos. I mean, I, um, I I hear the show's good because we've been talking about. I think we've talked about this before, where we've talked about other casting news from another show or a movie where someone else from Narcos is supposed to be in it. So those mm-hmm. people in that show must be doing good because they're jumping into uh, superhero stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to see. Um, I, also, I mean, Pierce has also been a high ranking member of the Hellfire Club and um, a genocidal mutant hater. So I don't know what they're gonna how they're gonna adapt him. They kind of, you know, the, the X Men movies take big liberties in ad- adapting characters that they have. So mm-hmm. we're gonna have to see how that plays off. But if he's been Narcos, Narcos got two seasons, can't be doing too bad. So maybe he's a great <laughs> actor. Uh, we also have some information on um, X-23, or Laura Kinney, uh, her character name in, in the comic books, will be played by uh, actress Sienna Novikov, who was in the movie Bad Moms. Uh, she's the little girl holding Logan's hand in the, the poster uh-huh. that we talked about last week. And she emerges from a transigen process as X-23. Um, transigen is... Um, it's it's like a, I guess it's like a, something that either makes mutants or brings about their mutant abilities. I, it might be something similar to how Deadpool was created. Uh huh. But I I don't again how they're going to adapt it to the movie. Still kind of up in the air because we've always assumed it was Old Man Logan, but you know now it's just Logan and X twenty three is going to be part of it. I I don't know what that that holds for us. Honestly, I wish I had more 
news for that or like hard facts but and it, um, and it's it's hard to really i wouldn't say necessarily get excited but when you have this uh young character in a movie that's kind of ending um his franchise and his role as wolverine you kind of wonder if we're really going to get anything out of it in the long run you know she's young so she can't exactly jump in and be you know badass x23 you know because like she's not even close to even being a teenager yet and then um you know if she's in this different future timeline like you know like we don't even know if we're even going to get much mileage out of the out of the casting anyway so i i don't really uh i don't really think about it too much yeah yeah and just a, a quick search said um transigen is a um a corporation that creates soldiers out of young mutants so there we go um Lastly, probably the biggest head scratcher here is that Richard E. Grant will be playing the character Dr. Xander Rice, not Nathaniel Essex, Mr. Sinister, as we originally assumed. Um, and this this person, uh, Rice, is the head of the Weapon X department in, in the comic books and should be in the movie as well. Uh, all right. So <laughs> I, I don't know why they're not using Mr. Sinister. What does that mean for the end of the apocalypse teaser well maybe um, i mean maybe we I, are still getting mr sinister maybe this is just kind of they're burying the lead under a different character's name or maybe they're doing you know like you like you said the x-men movies like to take liberties so maybe this is their way yeah. of trying to surprise us while we're sitting down in the theater yeah i maybe will hope so but they're the, i'm not feeling any more confident about wolverine 3 than i did than I was two weeks ago. So I, I don't know how that's going to hold for us in the long run, but we're going to keep trucking and hopefully get a good Wolverine, good Hugh Jackman outing next mm-hmm. year in, in March. So we'll, we'll keep that we'll keep that going. Otherwise, in the X-Men universe, Kelsey Grammer, I know you're a big Frasier fan, <laughs> uh, said he wants to return as Beast in uh, some movie. And in, we in should a, let him. Movie. We should let him. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what the uh, what the word on the street was when um, when he premiered himself as Beast back in the day. I don't know if people liked the makeup, hated the makeup, or thought putting Frasier in a superhero movie was weird or not. But I remember when I was a kid and I watched it, I enjoyed it. I actually thought he kind of resonated with the '90s X Men cartoon really, really well. So I it kind of really made me feel like that was a Beast. So when we went to these kind of uh, younger uh, casting of uh, the, I don't remember the the kid's name that plays Beast now, um, but I always he always kind of felt kind of weird to me. So yeah, bring back Kelsey Grammer because he he was an awesome Beast. He he, he killed it. So I'm okay with yeah. that. I mean, I just kind of doing a quick search of reactions. No one had any bad things to say about Kelsey Grammer as Beast in 2006 we all hated the movie the last stand and he was <laughs> kind of underutilized but he did make a welcoming cameo was it in uh, the end of days of future past mm-hmm. so um they're, they're definitely not opposing his his um return i just i didn't think kelsey Grammer was in great health last i heard so that's why i was like do we really want to put him in beast is this like you know science lab only beast? Honestly, like, is he just gonna sit there. Honestly, they his- they probably just CG him nowadays. Um, so they probably make have him in makeup, but then like when he's doing action stuff, it would they would probably just superimpose his face on it, which I'd be fine with. You know, that's kind yeah. of how movies are made nowadays. So uh, they'll just do it maybe Andy Serkis style with them. But yeah, Kelsey Grammer, come on back. I want you to return as Beast. I miss you, man. There you go. Yeah, you got Mike's approval. That's that's really all we were looking for there. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Supergirl returned, I believe, this week um, it, it, on the CW, its new home. However, that's not the biggest news. Uh, Jimmy Olsen, the character Jimmy Olsen, who's played by, I think it's Mekad, Mekad, Mekad Brooks, <laughs> I don't know, is to become the character Guardian from the, the DC Comics in this upcoming season, which Jimmy Olsen has never become a, a character called the Guardian. He's always been Superman's best buddy uh, <laughs> in the book, so... Looks like they're giving him, I don't know, like a, uh, I don't know, like he looks like Steel, maybe from from the nineteen nineties. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a really big fan of the costume, but I always try to give lee- leeway when it comes to uh, TV costumes, just because I feel like they're they're working with you know what what they got. But um, we were talking before the show, before we started recording, I was just like, hey man, did you uh, did you watch Supergirl this week? Because I think we're gonna talk a little bit about Supergirl, right? And he's just like, you're like, no, I didn't watch it. And I was like, oh, neither did I. So we're kind of both waiting until the crossover hits with the Flash to you know get back on uh, Supergirl. I mean, we missed the whole first season. Uh, you know, it came out that they're not going to bring Supergirl into this universe. 
you know, necessarily. It, she's still staying on her own Earth, I guess, Earth four sixty or you know whatever number it is. So uh, yeah, we're not we're not uh we're not big uh we're not really big on Supergirl right now. Yeah, and I don't. I think my, my thing is here is does Jimmy Olsen need to gain a suit and become a fighter of crime with Supergirl and Superman? And quite possibly the Arrowverse and Flashverse later I, on as well. I mean, un- unfortunately, that's kind of one pet peeve that I have with these CW shows is everybody becomes a superhero. It's just like, you know, Cisco, Caitlin, uh, you know, anybody that uh, Oliver Queen is friends with an Arrow always becomes a superhero somehow. So no one can just be normal. So um, uh, I'm not surprised Jimmy got caught in, caught up in that. Yeah, that give it give them some metal suits. We're gonna we're gonna make them fight. So we got our first look at that. Take a look at that. We're gonna diggle ties How- them. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, we're not even gonna go there. Um, but in the DC universe, we got probably the biggest reveal this week. Actually, is Amber Heard as Mara in the upcoming Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been back and forth. Is Amber Heard in it? Is she not? Is Mara gonna show up? Now we get to see Mara, the wife of Aquaman, um, in her Aqua Lady suit, I guess. Yeah. So, do you want the uh, do you want the good news or the bad news for me on this? First. Lay it on me. Uh, let's go with the let's start with the bad news. Ooh, bad news. Okay. So basically, I look at this, and this is an official released promo shot from the set trying to get us all hyped on this and in the good uh, i'll tell you what makes me happy about that but this is so dark it, the palette is just <laughs> is so desaturated like you can't even really see the details in her suit until i you know you take it in photoshop and you mess with the levels uh it's just like it's just showing you the Zack snyder palette which just takes you back to the Zack Snyder movies and gives you a little, uh, gives you a, a bad taste in your mouth from what you've seen earlier. You know, I was hoping that maybe we'd get a, a little. I mean, I'm not looking to be like uh, giggling through the movie and uh, super happy, but I mean, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more than what we got there, here. <laughs> there is literally no contrast in this. Like, it's just like the way this photo is taken. Like, you can't like the the darker levels have overwhelmed the obviously green tone on this on the suit mm-hmm. uh it's again like you said it doesn't need to be light and bright and, and poppy but this it's just it's reminiscent of batman v superman look and that's not good for me that's not a good feeling like that's that's the bad. Now, what's the good, Mike? <laughs> the Give good, me the good. The good is the suit looks fucking awesome. I mean, this is kind of the <laughs> difference between when you get a Jimmy Olsen suit reveal on a C- CW budget and you get a blockbuster tentpole, po- tentpole movie suit. I mean, this looks really, really cool. It really messes mes- uh, meshes with what we've seen Jess- Jason Momoa wear for Aquaman. You know, she looks, she looks badass. I can't wait to kind of see how these people move around in the ocean, hopefully better than in that quick time video attachment that we saw on Batman vs Superman. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she looks badass. So that, that's the cool thing is just, maybe this is just a weird photo. You know, maybe, maybe things just, maybe Atlanteans just look bat more badass underwater, which is their, you know, natural habitat. So, but yeah, this looks badass. This is a, this is a, a good sign overall uh, visual wise for costumes. So, yeah, I went ahead and um, in our notes here and just added the uh, brightened up version that someone has touched up and, it looks much better seeing the contrast in her suit and the design, and it's very intricate. It looks really cool. Um, I think I think they did it an injustice by making it not seem as as cool as it is. So, uh, if you're watching the video, you'll see it. If not, click in the show notes to see the brightened up version, which mm-hmm. looks pretty awesome. I think. Uh, speaking of the DC EU extended universe, extended extended cut <laughs> universe, if you will. Because they keep doing that. Uh, there's uh, this is a bit of Mike's news he dropped on me. Uh, I think yesterday or the day before mm-hmm. um, about some rumors and leaks going on inside the entire DC extended universe going forward here. And we're gonna touch on. There's a link in here to a Reddit page which has tons of stuff. 
But we should touch on some very important topics in here, Mike. You lay it on us. So, your, this is your, your news. So this is really cool because, as we all know, I love rumors. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And this is the one thing that I really do appreciate from DC, and I've brought this up before, is DC's universe is not pan- panned out. We don't have a nice map that's taking us from point A to point Z and all the stops along the way. We don't really know what's happening. Partly that is due to uh, some uh, sour movies that they've had, so they had to mix things up, get new executives, and so They don't on. even know what they're doing. Exactly. Mike, that's what you're trying to say. So I love the I love the mystery behind it. I love not knowing what we're gonna get, and I love being able to speculate around it. So basically, I saw this week that there was a rumor up that um, uh, Jason uh, was it Jason Yoon Young. Is that, or is that his? I can't remember the guy that plays Glenn on The Walking Dead. For the life of me, oh, I, oh, I can't, um, re- I can't remember the actor's name, and I feel really, really bad. Um, that's okay. Or, or Stephen Young, or something yeah, like that. Stephen Yin. Yeah, Yin. That's right. So, um, there's rumors that he could possibly be Nightwing, and I think the reason that that is popping up around now is because The Walking Dead is premiering in a couple weeks, and I'm not a a hundred percent sure if uh, if the character is his character is surviving or not. But typically, if you're on the num- if you're on the number one TV show and you're about to get knocked off, you try to move into movies. So it wouldn't so it wouldn't surprise me if the, if that actor is trying to uh, is to move on up in the world and get be in a big old movie, you know, like that. And uh, and it w- also it was a big deal is that oh are we going to change the character Nightwing from a white character to an Asian character? And it, it didn't even bother me for a second. I mean, uh, uh, his whiteness has nothing to do with the character of Night- of Nightwing at all. So that's not even that's a non-issue for me. It's not like taking a character like Luke Cage and making him Asian. That would be totally totally different. You know, that's a totally different thing. So it didn't bother me at all. But uh, I thought the more interesting thing was the source that this came from, this rumor came from. And this really snuck below the radar because we're going to talk about a Reddit post here that's about a month old. So um, someone mysteriously showed up in the Suicide Squad uh, subreddit. And uh, without uh, any sort of explanation of of where it came from, someone just made a post just dumping all of these... uh, things that are going to be happening in, happening in the DC universe. Uh, he didn't, the, the person didn't say if it was a he or she. Uh, they didn't say if they worked on the set or if they knew somebody that did or if maybe they were uh, working with a sistering like, production house. We don't really know what the origin of this is. But when you start to look into it, we have quite a list here. We have many, many bullet points, some of them going into very, very descriptive detail of what could possibly be coming so it's almost like this mixture of is someone just totally bullshitting us and just took like an hour out of their day to write these um detailed uh rumors of what might be happening or is there some is there some credence to these rumors because i would think if someone's just gonna bullshit the 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 suicide squad reddit out there that they might kind of throw in stuff that would that people thought would be cool, but you know, would never happen. You know, someone's trying to make up a rumor. It's like, oh well, I heard, um, you know, I heard uh, Batman's gonna be in uh, in every movie coming out because Batman's super cool, so we should see Batman and everything. You know, these rumors seem to be a little bit more uh, realistic, is kind of what I'm saying. So anyway. That gives you the his, that gives you the background of these rumors, but there's some there's some interesting tidbits in here. So we were going to kind of talk about the stuff that we think might work, things that are maybe outlandish. But uh, uh-huh. I think I think the, the the one thing that's really been in my head uh, uh, recently is that HBO might be getting their own DC shows, kind of to compete with uh, Netflix. You know, what do you think about that? Uh, I think I I mean it sounds plausible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but then they would have two cinematic TV cinematic universes going on. When does that ever and stop DC? <laughs> it, it, I, I agree. I agree. Um, but I think also HBO Go, I mean, HBO needs something to replace the ending Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Westworld is being awesome. Love Westworld. But they're going to need more than just one new show over the next several years. So I think I think that sounds pretty plausible to me. Yeah, and uh, we we, there, we have a lot of rumors in here talking about dates, a lot of dates getting thrown around. Those those things don't intrigue me so much because they're just talking about schedule placement. Um, there was two kind of uh, I guess um, hiring uh, rumors in here that uh, that Warner Brothers is um, courting Edgar Wright and possibly Channing Tatum, which I thought was curious. 
because you know those are both guys that have possibly been attached to Marvel things. So maybe DC reaches out to Edgar Wright and say, "Hey man, we understand that you had a vision for Ant Man that they didn't let you do. Why don't you come on over to DC? We're gonna throw bags of money at you and make whatever you want because we have learned. We, from- we have no rules. <laughs> yeah, because we have learned from our mistakes. We're not gonna interfere anymore. We just want you to make whatever you want and make it awesome. And we know people love you, Edgar. So I thought that was interesting. And also Channing Tatum. We have been talking about this possible gambit movie for a long time now with no good news so maybe they're just like hey channing over there he's a superstar he's floundering over there he wants to be in a a superhero movie let's bring him over to dc where you know he could really make a difference so i thought that was interesting and then we have this uh this detailed description of what this possible batman movie could be did you get a chance to look at that oh yeah I've, i've read this i've read this pretty full here and um, it's kind of, um, I guess, like we said, he's trying to put the prisoners back into Arkham. Kind yeah, of it, seems, it, it seems to be a, a bit of a mixture of like Arkham Asylum with a little bit of Deadshot running around in there. So I, I, I think that has some credence to it just because I think a lot of people think Arkham would be a good uh, connection with a, a solo Batman movie, especially since it's a future a future Batman where he's uh, further along in his career. So he would have, in this universe, put a lot of characters away in Arkham already. So that does make sense. So um, I think I think that would be an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. It, it, the only thing I could see, it's got Deathstroke and Deadshot in it, and they've kind of said Deathstroke is the Batman villain. So I don't know... I, this can change. Obviously, this can change. So, mm-hmm. um, hopefully, they they come to a consensus on which one they want to have. Because even looking at the names Deadshot and Deathstroke, you're like, which one's which again? <laughs> and, and I'm I'm someone who knows the difference between the two. So yeah, and uh-huh. and there you know there's there's two more things I'll I'll hit on before we kind of jump out of these rumors because uh, you know I don't want to hit them too hard just in case they're totally false and we're just spending all this time on nothing. But um, a big thing is that cyborg. The Cyborg movie might be done. It might be out. And that is actually really believable to me. You know, Cyborg is a character that no one really knows. We're, we're on a very uh, shaky grounds with the DC Universe right now. So why would they take a chance on a budget for a Cyborg movie when no one really is familiar with the actor that's playing Cyborg? No one really is familiar with the character. Uh, he had a really weird outing in the um, in the quick time attachment. You know, he doesn't have a companion TV show on the CW to get familiar with. So they're saying that it kind of he they might uh, flesh him out more in the Justice League and in, and possibly in the Flash movie. Um, well, and, ti- and 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 replace it with a Titans film. Yeah, so, uh, so. I th- I think that makes sense, and that's actually I think that's pretty smart, uh, cyborg wise. And then uh, the last thing to touch on here is uh, some something that I feel like is kind of crazy, but I feel like Zack Snyder would be uh, crazy enough to do it. Is that we're going to be getting a bearded Superman in the Justice League? <laughs> that's one thing that kind of uh, caught me off guard when I was reading through these rumors. So we'll, you know, we'll see if we'll get that long hair, bearded, black suited Superman or not. I feel like that's a little over the top, but uh, you know, with Zack Snyder, you never know. Well, I think that would be very uh, iconic to the return of the dead Superman in the comic books, mm-hmm. where he came back with a mullet and beard. Now, I, I'd, I'd be totally fine with it. The only thing with that, the Justice League bit of room here, it says Joker and Harley are in it, and I'm like, well, now it just seems like you're pandering. So hopefully hopefully that part's not true. We don't need to see Joker and Harley in the Justice League. Yeah, exactly. Uh, think of the... Think of the highest sodium food you have out there. Think of it like beef jerky. Beef jerky is really salty. Lots of grains of salt in beef jerky. So if you see where I'm going here, snack on some of that when you come read these rumors because you're going to need it. Um, I think there's some some glimmer of truth in these rumors. It's just really hard for me to believe that someone out there is just writing all this for no goddamn good reason. And why would they only put it in a Suicide Squad subreddit? You know, if you're going to go to all this trouble uh, to fake it, you you know maybe try to to put it out there somewhere else, maybe on a comic book subreddit that's a little bit bigger. So I don't know. I, I thought this was really exciting. I you know I loved uh, I loved uh, going down the rumor mill yeah. with you. So this is the one thing that DC and Warner Brothers are are doing that gets me hype is these uh, is these all the unknowns. So. Yeah, you definitely take a look at it. It's worth your read, and let us know if there's anything you'd like to see or not like to see in there. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like to know what everybody else thinks. 
But speaking of Warner Brothers and maybe adding a little credence to this, they've added two new event film dates to their Ooh, schedule. Ooh, cool. Um, and one of those is September 27th, 2019. Mm-hmm. And the other one is February 2nd, 2020, which would line up with the Man of Steel 2 rumor from your from the post. Yes. Saying that Man of Steel 2 would come out in 2020, and February would be a place to put Man of Steel 2, because it's definitely, I don't think it's a... I don't think it, it considers yourself a tent pole anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's there's actually quite a bit that we can pull out from this February date here. If we assume that it is going to be a DC movie, I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like uh, one of two things could happen. Either this uh, pattern of darker rated R movies is going to hit in February, which I thought was really cool with Deadpool, and I kind of want that to be a trend. I love that February could be uh, uh, two sides of a coin where you have romantic Valentine's Day movies, um, and then you also have these super graphic superhero movies that are rated R. But maybe uh, DC is kind of extrapolating from that going, hey, a superhero movie can make a crap ton of money in in February. Let's go ahead and just start putting PG-13 tentpole, well, necessarily not tentpole, but, you know, big budget movies in February. So mm-hmm. I, <laughs> and, say, and, save, and save maybe something else bigger, like a Green Lantern film for the summer. Yeah, maybe. So I, I, I really don't know if I can envision a Superman movie because, I mean, Superman movie may not be uh, big anymore, but Superman's still a, still a big draw. It's hard for me to mm-hmm. imagine it being in February. I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe a darker tone movie. Yeah, maybe. I mean, who knows? I'm still leaning towards Superman, but that's to say if these, in fact, are DC movies, they could be something like Fantastic Beasts and Where You Find Them sequels because as of this week, we have confirmation from J.K. Rowling yourself that she has written four more movies <laughs> making Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them a quintet of films. Surprise, guys. I'm glad that you found that movie, that you found that uh, that movie uh, phrasing, a quintet. You know, it's not a trilogy. I don't really know what four movies is. The quintet. The quintettery. Yes. Uh, y- now you're just making stuff up. <laughs> so um, it's actually funny because one of my – on my other podcast, Film Side Chess, we spent a whole episode talking about the history of trilogy mm-hmm. in films. And um, a lot of movies have trilogies, but have gone on to add a fourth or fifth film and, and make it really, really awkward. Um, but this is taking an Avatar approach, I feel. Like, again, Harry Potter movies are going to be huge, but I guess now we have a prequel set of films in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. Whereas the other one was eight, now we have possibly five, and she's going to write them all and, and make them all you know popular yeah that's you know that's one thing that makes me feel better about this you know i think if it was any other franchise or any other writer i'd be like oh cash grab cash grab cash grab but guess what jk rowling does not need any more money she is rich beyond (laughs) beyond comprehension so uh the fact that not only is she on board with this but she's writing them that just means that she really has a story that she wants to tell you know if she has uh every ability to write this as blog posts on her website which she's been doing she could even make books if she wanted to and flush Mm -hmm. it all out in books but she she seems to be really on board with this film medium and she's writing these scripts i mean if she just wanted money you know she could just hire they would just have warner brothers hire a writer and just uh, kind of adapt her (laughs) ideas you know, yeah, so, or she she she'd do all three of them. She turned it into a movie, a book, and a play. Yeah, exactly. If she really wanted money. Exactly. So I, I I that's one thing that makes me excited that she is into this. So we're gonna get some uh, official canon. It's almost like we're getting um we're getting a uh, book straight to movies. Almost. She's just like, hey, I don't have I don't have the time to write eight hundred pages. Let's let's just do this. Uh, let's just do like a, a hundred page uh, script, and we're just gonna nail it out. And I'm gonna get the story out there, and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm on board if she's writing all of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I, our our wives will definitely be excited to hear that oh, as well. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. If they don't already know at this point. Uh, moving on to large, uh, maybe possibly franchise films, The Dark Tower. The first trailer was leaked earlier this week and taken down almost immediately because it wasn't quite finished yet. Some of the mm-hmm. CG wasn't there. And I sent this out to a couple people who know The Dark Tower, who have responded to our stuff, and have said that it it does do some differences in, from the books. Um, you know, but that it's not enough to turn them off of the film. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is one of the positive things for us is we don't really know much about the material. So when this big movie franchise that could possibly going to be a TV show on HBO drops, you know, we are, we're, we'll just be able to enjoy it for what it's for, you know? 
Yeah, definitely. I agree. So uh, we don't have the link to that. However, a couple images were released, uh, official images of the film, and just kind of taking a look at it. Um, I actually did not know any of this movie took place in our universe. Yeah, that's in like current time. That's what I thought too. I was surprised to kind of see like a like a, a normal bedroom and there's a uh, They're riding know, the bus. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, okay, I kinda was thinking apocalyptic, you know, with like I was thinking almost more Mad Maxi, you know. So um uh, okay, yeah, it's, a, cool. it's a dark tower. There's a guy with six shooters and a wizard who dresses in black and people you know fear him so i was like okay this is going to be like very sci-fi fantasy western nope it's definitely takes place in our universe (laughs) as well so eye-opening for for noobs like us so exactly got exciting uh you may have heard also this week that aladdin has been given the live action you know um go ahead with guy Ritchie to direct it so they're turning Aladdin into a live-action Disney movie with Guy Ritchie, known for his movies Sherlock, and uh, one of my favorite films actually he did was Snatch. So, and uh, I guess there's kind of a sleeper favorite, uh, Man from Uncle. A lot of people really liked that movie. I, I I didn't I didn't hate it. I'm gonna be honest. I mm-hmm. saw it in the drive-in, didn't hate it. So yeah, and he's yeah. doing um, he's doing uh, that King Arthur movie that's coming out i don't really know what studio is attached to that but for some reason i thought disney but maybe not but it seems like they're they're bringing him into the the the, the disney family so um you know if uh, john favreau is getting uh, two disney movies maybe we'll see guy Ritchie doing uh, i don't know something else in the future but uh an aladdin movie that's yeah. something i still gotta get used to you know <laughs> yeah i mean i It's actually, of the live-action films, this one will have more people than CG Uh in it. Um, But I'm at a lot of parkour. It honestly reminds me of The Prince of Persia quite a bit, if if I'm to sit and think of it. Mm -hmm. I'm like... The Prince of Persia movie. This this is probably gonna be like to it. So I don't know. We'll have to have to play it by ear and see how it turns out. But I'm not I'm not turned off on it. I mean, I'd watch this before I'd watch Lion King to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I still got to go back and watch the Jungle Book because apparently I'm getting these uh I'm getting my impressions of these live action Disney movies all wrong. So I like to think that they know and they're just they're trying to bring me around specifically just me. Yeah, exactly. It's just these are all for Mike, so so he can talk good about them on our podcast. <laughs> uh, a couple things to finish up the show here because we've definitely gone over a little longer than usual. That's what happens when we have a lot to say. Uh, the Predator reboot or sequel or whatever it is has lost Benicio del Toro, um, and has uh, since you called me that earlier, the collector, <laughs> and has gained Boyd Holbrook, who we talked about in Logan earlier. All right, I mean uh, Benicio del Toro always looks like he needs to take a nap, so I think he just he's just tired. So <laughs> he he. he He's one of my favorite part of the Guy Ritchie movie, Snatch. So there we go. Look, see, it all comes together. <laughs> Predator brings everything together right there at the end. Uh, Wizard of Oz, a prequel movie, is in the work. Another one uh, um, called, uh, based on the book How the Wizard Came to Oz, which I already thought had happened with James <laughs> Franco. I, I don't know who's making this, actually. I don't think it's Disney. I think somebody else is making yeah. it since Wizard of Oz is open territory. It's it's going to take an actor and a director to make me even consider watching this movie because I mean I'm not I'm not partial to the Wizard of Oz. I know a lot of people grew up with it, especially people that are older than us have a real affinity for Oz, but I I I don't really care so. <laughs> what what's what's interesting about this is this book actually came out in 1991 and it's definitely like not a I I don't think it's tied into the original Wizard of Oz trilogy by the same thing. Uh-huh. But uh, it's I mean, we saw Oz the Great and Powerful, which I thought it was, but I guess, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to play by ear. And lastly, uh, War of the Worlds, uh, the the old radio show, which people thought was actually really happening, later became a, several movies, uh, one with Tom Cruise, directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, is MTV's developing this into a TV series. Would you watch a War of the Worlds <laughs> TV show. I think, I, I mean, my opinion is totally based on it being on MTV. The one thing I know about MTV is if you have anything on that network, good luck. It is not going to last long no matter what you do. I think they have a kind of a sci-fi show like Chronicles of Shannar Hara. Yeah, I, th- I think that ended. I think yeah. that only made it one season. Yeah, so I don't know if MTV is also trying to get into this whole like gotta must-see TV drama show thing. 
But uh, World of Worlds on MTV, what are they going to do? Cast a bunch of tweens trying to survive aliens? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to bash MTV here, but, like, they do not have the best track records the- for things lasting longer than, like, honestly a season. So so I was wrong. Um, they they recently ordered a second se- season of Shannara Chronicles. Um, but it feels like an ABC Freeform kind of thing. Like, mm. like these are going to be, like, there are a bunch of shows on, like, TNT and TBS, I think, that are, like, War of the Worlds esque, like aliens are taken over and we have to become a band of rebels and fight them. Mm-hmm. Like, is War of the Worlds really prime for a TV series? Just, like, there are other things out there you could choose. Just don't teenify it. I mean, I don't need to see a bunch of teens saving the world. Didn't they? Didn't they learn that lesson from that like Chloe like Moretz movie, like the Fifth Wave or something? I don't really know what that movie was called, but no one really cared about it. So, uh, and especially with those Divergent movies going down the can. So. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Be wary yeah. if you if you get addicted to this uh, show on MTV. It might not last. Yeah, uh, it it definitely yeah. If it comes to fruition, even uh, it could be wiped out with the common cold, just like <laughs> the aliens were. Um, I'm gonna add a new segment here. Last minute news that have come up since we started the show, Mike, because oh, I've got man. three different things that popped up. Holy crap! Sunday, bringing it out, bringing it out. S- yeah, so um, Ghost Rider's origin on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will actually be part of the sixth episode of Season 4. Cool, So we're going right. to figure that out. They're not going to let us guess, so that's great. Doctor Strange's runtime has been revealed as 114 minutes and 49 seconds. Oh, so that's just under two hours then. Yes. Uh, if, if my math of multiplying 60 by 2 works you're out. You're five minutes, five <laughs> minutes shorts of two hours, so there we go, uh, which I think is, is very... Um, I think that's great. That that's doesn't very, bother me. Very typical. Very fair. Very fair. Um, and in in contrast, real quick, Iron Man one was a hundred and twenty six minutes. Mm. So, um, all right, that's <laughs> it's it's all in that it's it's a movie time length. They they nailed it. They got us. And lastly, the Ghostbusters theatrical release came out this week, Mike. I know we talked about all these movies getting extended releases uh-huh. and stuff like that. And although we're not here to promote Ghostbusters, we have a spoiler cast if you want to listen to it, but the original theatrical cut was released this week, and to celebrate, I'm going to open up a can of Ecto Cooler <laughs> on the show, as is tradition. Oh, there you go, man. You still have those. Though at least we got one really good thing out of that movie. I mean, honestly, we said we didn't really, we didn't really bash this movie. We, you know, we had an okay time. We could, we could have, we. The best way to say it is, we could have logically have seen a sequel. Up for this movie, but obviously it did not pan out financially. I don't think so. It's interesting to th- see that they didn't put any bells and whistles on the on the home release. But um, Ghostbusters, we've only really cared about Ecto Cooler and and probably the cartoons do, in the past. Because do you think the- enough Ecto Cooler has <laughs> sold to warrant a sequel? Like we made all this money from Ecto Cooler, let's make another movie so we can keep selling this Ecto Cooler. Just give us a badass um, a Ghostbusters cartoon show because that's what I watched growing up. I watched the cartoon shows and I bought the action figures, so it worked out that way. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, maybe cross over with Blade. Wink, wink. <laughs> Blade, oh, man. oh, man, Wesley Snipes. All right. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's our show. Like I said, we've gone over a little bit, a little longer than usual, but we've had a lot of good stuff. Uh, we could have made a whole episode out of the DC uh, rumors stuff. Oh, so yeah. if you want to read more of that, go click the link. Check out all our stuff. Mike, they heard you were drawing last or this past weekend. Maybe they want to see what you're up to. Maybe your own comics that are coming out. We're really excited. Where can they find that at? Ooh, well, you can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. There's going to be some really cool stuff coming out of uh, Pickled Comics in the at the tail end of this year, at the beginning of next year. I hit a I hit a, a cool little milestone with uh, followers on my uh, comic Tumblr page, so I'll be uh, I'll be uh, posting about that here soon. So I'm pretty excited. I'm looking forward to uh, doing a lot more drawing here in the future. So look out for that. Uh, Chris, people want to know, like, so when you talked, when you said that there, that daredevil box thing was released, I just imagine you, uh, okay, I'm going to try to paint a visual picture here before we end the show here. So you're at your desk, you're scrolling through news. And I like to imagine, uh, just for sake of visuals that your bookshelf is literally right next to you by your desk. So you're scrolling through the news. You see the daredevil is getting uh, released into that physical form. You simply in a very straight face, lean back in your chair. You move one of the DVDs, one night over and you're, you made the room. You've made the decision that you're going to slide Daredevil right in there. So if I've, that <laughs> I've, I've pre-ordered it in my head, if you will. So if that if that ends up happening, or if people want to get more details about that Doctor Strange preview, where can they reach out? 
Yeah, you can reach me at Twitter at Valdan, V A L D A N. Uh, I'd love to talk about the Doctor Strange stuff. There's a lot more that was teased and revealed that I'm not telling Mike because <laughs> Thank you. I'm a good person like that. Uh, I also got half of the Doctor Strange pots <laughs> already this week that are coming out. So if you want to see that on my Twitter, that's there too. Uh, you can also listen to my other show, Filmside Chats, which we referenced several times here. Um, at filmsidechats.com, also on iTunes, and lastly, uh, Comic UI. If I write anything on there for the week, you can go to Comic UI. A lot of, lot of, lot of t- content creation coming out of this <laughs> side of me. Um, and, and if people are listening to the show and they want to learn more about us, we, we are 92 episodes in. We're closing in on that 100 you know, milestone. Mike, where can they listen to all the other episodes for us. All right. Well, I'm going to bang this out real quick because my wife is uh, I'm pretty sure she's making blueberry muffins and the scent is seeping into this room and it's making me really hungry. <laughs> so, oh, so, oh, we don't wait for blueberry <laughs> muffins, Mike. Let's go. So, if, if, okay. You want to head on over to SuperheroSlate.com because that is the best place to find all the places that we host the show. And also, if you want to check out those uh, show notes where you can get links to those DC rumors and look at all the other stuff that we've posted in the show notes, uh, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, your tumblr subscribe and get us right in your email inbox uh with email and you can like us on facebook and follow us on twitter if you're a fan of the show consider leaving us a review where you listen to the show because that's awesome gives us some awesome street cred out there in the podcast universe get us some new listeners and if you're a super fan of the show the easiest best thing to do which i see a lot of you people doing now which is really awesome you guys are super awesome if you're super fans just share the show with a friend share the show with a yes. buddy and we will be here every week talking about how we want to eat muffins yes all right. <laughs> now i'm jealous of mike's blueberry muffins so all right well i guess that's it for the show we'll be back next week and we'll catch you guys then all right bye everybody bye thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe Look look at you. Look at you, the producer type.